Find V and M for the beam. We're going to do this in three different ways, by taking two different sections and by integrating. But in all of those cases, absolutely the first thing you always have to do is draw a free body diagram for your beam. I've got AY and AX and some moment acting at the root of the beam. That's the wall. Now to find out what those are, I'm going to actually express that distributed load as an equivalent point load. It's a triangle, so it's going to act at a third of the way from the big end, which is five-thirds of a meter away from the end of the wall. And the area under the load intensity diagram is one-half base times height, two times five, which is five kilonewtons. So when I take the sum of the forces in x, I get ax equals zero. When I take the sum of the forces in y, I get ay equals five. And when I take the sum of the moments, about, say, point A, I'm going to get MA is 5 times 5 thirds, or 8 and a third kilonewton meters. Those are the reactions at the end. No matter what you do, that's always the first step. Now, I'm going to take, as my first method, a section of the beam that goes from the wall, where my 5 kilonewton loads and my 8 and a third kilonewton meters loads act. So this is X. It comes out from the wall X. I have portion of my distributed load acting on my beam so far, but not the whole of it. So this is no longer a triangle. It starts at 2 kilonewtons per meter, because that was the load intensity diagram at the wall, and it decreases to a value that is not zero, because I haven't gotten all the way out to the tip. That height right here is given by the equation for the line. The equation for the line is 2 minus rise over run, 2 fifths x. So it starts at 2 and it decreases with a slope of 2 fifths until it gets to the end of the beam. Double check. If I plug in x equals 5, do I get 0? Yeah, I would. So that's this, the equation for the line. So the height of my load intensity diagram at x is 2 minus 2 fifths x. I can also put on my internal loads using correct sign conventions. And that's my free body diagram for a portion of the beam. What I want to do at this point is redraw this free body diagram using equivalent point loads. And what I want to do is I want to divide my load intensity diagram up into a, the bottom rectangle, which is going to act right at the middle of the load intensity diagram, which would be x over 2. And the top triangle, which I'm going to call F2, which acts a third of the way from the big end, which is x over 3. And I still have V, M, and N. It just makes it a little bit easier to write down what we've got. The rectangle, the area under the load intensity diagram for the rectangle, will be 2 minus 2 fifths x times x. F1 is 2x minus 2 fifths x squared. The triangle load intensity diagram is going to be 1 half base times height. Well, the height is 2 if it were the whole height, but it's not. It's 2 minus 2 fifths of x. So that's my height over here, and that is multiplied by the base of the triangle as x. That simplifies, since my 2's cancel, to 1 fifths x squared. Now I can write my sum of the forces in moments. Sum of the forces in x just tell me, tells me that n equals 0. Sum of the forces in y tells me that 5 minus f1, which is 1 fifth x squared, minus f2, 2x minus 2 fifths x squared, minus v equals 0. Or v is 1 fifth x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now I can take the sum of the moments at the break. The 8 and a third, don't forget that part, acts in a, in a way opposite the 5x. I'm gonna, one of them has to be positive and the other one's negative. So I'm going to let the 5x be positive and the 8 and a third be negative. The f2 part acts at 2 thirds of x. The f1, because remember I'm taking the sum, the sum of the moments at the break, so if it's x over 3 from the wall to f2, then it's 2 thirds of x from f2 to the break. f1 acts at x over 2 away from the break, and I have my internal moment m. The only one that tends to spin any of this clockwise is my 5x. All of the rest of them are going counterclockwise, the way I've drawn my free body diagram. If you do the algebra here, 5x minus, if you plug in f2, which was a fifth x squared, times 2 thirds x gives me minus 2 fifteenths x cubed. F1 multiplied by x over 2 gives me minus x squared plus 1 fifth x cubed. And I can actually write down my answer now. V of x is 1 fifth x squared minus 2x plus 5. And M of x 
if you combine the x cubes, gives you 1 15th x cubed minus x squared plus 5x minus 8 and a third. So that's my answer. Obviously, if you were doing this just to get the answer, you can stop right there. But I'm going to continue and tell you the other ways that I could do this. If you don't like trapezoids, in this case, you can certainly integrate. It might even be easier. W of x is a distributed load acting on a beam where W is defined as positive down. Well, I have a distributed load that acts on my beam, pushing it down. And the equation for that line is 2 minus 2 fifths x. I already figured that out. Now, you can stop and check. At x equals 0, W is 2. That corresponds to 2 kilonewtons per meter down at the wall, which is what we've got. V of x is the negative integral from 0 to x of W of x dx plus V at the wall. So, I can plug that in. That gives me V of x is minus, if I integrate that from 0 to x, I get 2x minus 1 fifth x squared plus 5. Vx, V of x is 1 fifth x squared minus 2x plus 5, which is what we had before. M of x has to be the integral, the positive integral from 0 to x of V of x dx plus m at the wall. m, if I integrate my v, I get 1 15th x cubed minus x squared plus 5x. Now, if you get stuck, you can always think of a, a limit as x goes to 0. What happens to m? I've got an 8 and a third that way, and my internal moment you know is always also counterclockwise. Well, that means that the 8 and a third has to be negative. So when you integrate that, you get minus 8 and a third, which matches what we've got before, which is very encouraging. But there is yet a third way you could do this problem. You could certainly start from the other end. Now, my sign conventions mean I'm going the other way with V, N, and M. But now, my load intensity diagram is a triangle again. It goes down to zero at the tip of the beam. The height of my triangle is 2 minus 2 fifths X, just like it was in each of the other situations. The length of my beam is now 5 minus X, since I go all the way out to the tip and I come back X. Now I can take the sum of the forces in X is N equals zero, the sum of the forces in Y, tells me V is equal to that area of that triangle. V up, distributed load down. The area of my triangle is 2 minus 2 fifths X times the base is 5 minus X divided by 2. So V is 1 fifth X squared minus 2 X plus 5, which is what we had before. Let's take the sum of the moments about the break. Now, be careful. You have the equivalent point load which we just found up there for V, acts at a third of the way from the big end of the triangle, which is 5 minus X over 3. And I have to add my internal force, which is in the same direction now as my equivalent point load from my distributed load. If you multiply that out, you get exactly the same thing we had above. Any of these methods is perfectly valid. Some of them are easier for some people than others. It's up to you. They all give you the same answer. It is useful to know how to do all of them because different problems, in some cases, one of these methods is considerably easier than another. And it's always worth remembering that there are multiple ways of doing this.